Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to learn one of the most commonly used APIs in the world of web services, the REST API. But before understanding what is REST, we need to understand what is an API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a set of routines and requests that enable communication and data exchange between different applications and services. In short term, it's a way for two computers to talk to each other. There are different kind of APIs out there, but the most popular API used these days by most web and mobile applications is the REST API. So what is REST? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It's a set of rules and patterns that define how applications or devices can connect and communicate with each other. An API that follows all these set of rules and patterns, it's called a RESTful API. Some real life examples that use REST are Google Maps, Stripe, PayPal, SendGrid, YouTube, and Twilio, and many others. Let's understand the basics of REST. REST APIs use URIs to address resources. REST URIs should refer to a resource by noun and not by verb. An API to get all products should be product and not get all product. A client should interact with a resource by making a request to the endpoint for the resource over HTTP protocol. The URIs precede by an HTTP verb or method which tells the server what to do with the resource. The most used HTTP verbs are post to create a new resource, get to read a resource, put to update a resource, and delete, as the name already says, to delete a resource. If we combine the initials of these four operations, we get a famous acronym called CRUD. There are other HTTP verbs that can be used as well, like patch, options, and head. Requests can have a request body that contains a payload of data, usually in XML or JSON format. The server receives the request, processes it, and formats the result into a response. Responses contain an HTTP status code, informing the client what happened to the request. The most used HTTP status codes are the 200s, which indicates that the request was successful, the 400s, which indicates an error caused by the client, and the 500s, which indicates an error caused on the server. To request for a specific resource, a parameter can be added on the endpoint URL. The server will process the request parameter and send a specific resource on the response body. Some API endpoints may take a lot of time to respond, due to different reasons. One of the ways to improve the API performance is to implement caching. It allows the client to reuse previously fetched data. Another reason why some API endpoints may take some time is due to the huge amount of data to process. To fix this problem, the API should implement pagination. Pagination is a process used to divide a large data set into smaller chunks. To request for a specific page, for example, a query parameter can be added on the endpoint URL. Query parameters or query string is defined as a question mark followed by the parameters and their values. The client can pass multiple query parameters in the URL which can be separated by an ampersand. Query parameters can also be used for sorting and filtering data. All calls to the REST API should be stateless. This means that every interaction is independent and each request and response must provide all the information required to complete the interaction. REST APIs do not require any server-side sessions. Servers are not allowed to store any data related to client requests. Lastly, versioning of an API is very important. API versioning is the practice of managing changes to an API and ensuring that these changes are made without disrupting clients. There are many ways to version an API. The most straightforward is to prefix the version before the resource on the URI. In summary, REST APIs are popular and widely used architecture style for building web services and APIs. They are simple, scalable, and flexible, and can be used to build a wide range of applications and systems. Let's build a REST API using Node.js and Express. I'll be using VS Code for the tutorial, but feel free to use any code editor you like. And I have an empty folder here on VS Code open, and it's called REST API with Node.js. And we're going to start by creating our project. So I'm just going to open the terminal here on the top. And the comment to create a new node project is npm init. Hit enter. It's going to ask a few questions here. Uh, you can just hit enter for everything. 
and later we can change all this information if we need to. Is this okay? Yes. Okay. So as you can see here, it created a new package JSON file containing all the information from our project. Next, we need to install the express dependency. So I'm going to clear the terminal, npm install express. Express is a framework that will help us with the routes and manipulate requests and responses. Okay, so express is installed under the dependencies object. And as you can see here on the package JSON as well, we have a main field with an index.js file. So we need to create that file here on the root. So new file, index.js. Okay, this is gonna be our main file. Let me close some things here, the terminal and the package JSON as well. Okay, so here on the top, uh, I'm gonna start by importing express. So const express equals to require express. Okay, next we need to initialize express. So I'm gonna create a new constant here, call app, const app equals to express function. Okay, uh, next express needs to listen in a specific port so our server can be started. So I'm just gonna type here app dot listen and the first parameter is gonna be the port number. So I'm just gonna use uh, 3000 here. Okay, and the next parameter is gonna be a callback. If everything is working, I'm just gonna type a message on the console. So console.log and inside server started on port 3000. Okay, now let's test all this. So I'm gonna open the terminal again. Uh, I'm gonna clear here first and I'm gonna type node index.js. Okay, server started on port 3000, so our server is working. Let me stop the terminal here. Okay, now let's create a home route, a basic route, and it's gonna be a git route. So right below the express initialization, I'm gonna type app.git, okay? And the name of the route is just gonna be a slash, so that means it's gonna be a home route, okay? And next, we'll receive two parameters here, the request and the response. Okay, all right, so the request is everything that the clients uh, send to us, okay? And we need to send a response back to the client, okay? So let's do that right now. So let's send a response back. So response dot send, and inside I'm just gonna type uh, testing here. Okay, just so we can test, okay? Uh, back on the terminal node, index.js, Okay, server started on port 3000. Now I'm gonna open the browser here and I'm gonna type localhost uh, column 3000. Hit enter and as you can see, okay, we send the testing response. So our route is working, everything is working. Let me stop the terminal. So every time we change something in the code, we have to save, uh, stop the terminal and run again node index.js. So let's install a library that will handle this for us, okay? It's called Nodemon. So npm install Nodemon. And this is gonna be a dev dependency. So I'm gonna put dash dash here, save, dash again, dev. So this flag here indicates that Nodemon will be a development dependency. So if we check the package JSON, as you can see here on the dev dependencies, we have Nodemon. And on the dependencies, we have Express. So if we put this in production, only the dependencies will be installed, not the dev dependencies, okay? This one is only used for development. All right, so let's test Nodemon, but first we need to change here on the script section, okay? We have a script here, test, but we're not gonna use this, so I'm just gonna uh, delete it. And I'm gonna create a new script here, and it's gonna be named start, and it's gonna receive the nodemon command. So instead of running node index.js, we're gonna run nodemon index.js. Okay, save it, and now let's start this command here. So I'm gonna clear the terminal, and to run this script uh, start, we need to type npm start. Hit enter. Okay, now Nodemon will monitor changes on our project. Let's test Nodemon to see if it's working here on the index.js. I'm gonna change the response text here to hello world. 
Okay, now once I save this file, Nodemon will restart the server for us. Okay, perfect. As you can see here on the terminal, Nodemon restart the server. Now let's test this on the browser. Uh, I'm just gonna refresh the localhost 3000 and there it is, hello world. Okay, so now we don't need to worry to stop the server and restart it again. Okay, Nodemon is already taken care for us. We can even close the terminal here. Okay, so we created our server and a basic home route and everything is working. For this tutorial, we're not gonna use any database. So we'll be manipulating some data directly on memory. So here after the express initialization, let's create an array of products that we'll be using to simulate a table in case of a SQL database or a collection in case of a NoSQL database. And inside this array, we're gonna create an object with some details here, like name. And this one is gonna be a laptop. And we're gonna put the price, which is gonna be 400. Okay. And we're gonna have a quantity as well, like in stock. So this one is gonna be four. And let me add a different field here, a Boolean field. So active if this product, we're, uh, we're still selling it and it's gonna be true. Okay, so we have our first object here with different kinds of fields like a string, a number, integer, and a boolean, okay? Uh, let me copy this so we can add another one. So I'm gonna put a comma here and paste and now this is gonna be a keyboard. Okay, and the price is gonna be 29.99, okay. Quantity, we have 10 of these and is also active. Okay, uh, this is good, so we can start testing. And let's say if a client requests to read all these products, so we need to send as a response this array of products. For that, let's create another git route here. So app.git, and the name of this route will be the resource that the client requested. So in this case, slash products and it's gonna receive the same parameters as the other route, so request and the response. And inside this route, we need to send the products array as a response. So response dot, but this time, instead of sending a text response, we're gonna send a JSON response. So dot JSON. And inside, we're gonna put the products array with the two products that we have. Perfect, so that's all we need on this route. Let's test on the browser. So localhost column 3000 slash products. Hit enter and there we go. As you can see, we send the array as a JSON response. So our new route is working. But what if the client wants to add a new product to the array? So back on VS Code, let's create a new route to create a new product here on the array, okay? So below the uh, last route that we create, the git products, we're gonna create a post route. So app.post. So we use the post method when we want to create a new resource. And the name of this route is gonna be the same, slash products, okay? The same as the git. So the git route is to read products and the post route is to create a product. As you can see, I put products in plural but we can also put in singular. It's really up to you, the name convention. Just make sure if you're using singular to make all routes in singular like this. I'll put everything back to plural, but it's a personal choice. Okay, so the post route will receive the request and the response as well. And this time the client will send to us a request with a body inside containing the product's information, okay? So let's log this request object that we have here. So console.log uh, request.body. Let's also send a response so the request doesn't hang without a response. Okay, so response.send and inside I'm just gonna put a sample text here, okay. Let's test this new post route, but we can't test on the browser anymore because browsers only handle GET requests. So from now, uh, I'll be using Postman to test the requests. Uh, Postman is a HTTP client, so we can test uh, HTTP requests with different methods. There are other softwares you can use for client requests, so feel free to use whichever you prefer. Here on Postman, I'll click on the plus sign on the top 
to open a new tab and this will open a new request. So as you can see here, we have the URL field and the method field with the list of all the methods we can use here. Okay, so let's just test here on Postman the get products that we already have. So HTTP uh, localhost 3000 slash products. Okay, we can click on send and there it is. Uh, here in Postman, we have a better formatted response as you can see here. But let's test the new post route. So I'm just gonna copy the URL that we already have, create a new tab and I'm gonna paste the URL here and I'm gonna change the method here to post, okay? And to send a body uh, on the request, we can click on the body tab here on Postman and we can send different kinds of body to the request, but we wanna send a raw JSON body. So we can click on the raw option and on the drop down here, we can select JSON. Okay, perfect. So now we just need to type a, a JSON body here. Okay, so I'm gonna open an object and the fields must be inside double quotes. So the first field will be the name and this one is gonna be a monitor 27 inch. Okay, since this is a string, it should be in double quotes as well. Okay, the next field is gonna be the price and this one, it's a number, a float. So I'm gonna put here 300. Okay, and the next field is the quantity and it's an integer field and I'm gonna put two here. And the last field is the active Boolean field and I'm gonna put true. Okay, uh, so if we click on send, we're gonna get the okay response here. So everything is working. Now let's check on the logs, what we have on the request. And we got undefined. Uh, that's because we need to tell Express that we receive requests as a JSON format from the client, okay? So we need to add an extra configuration here. It's actually a middleware on Express. So after the Express initialization, I'm gonna type app.use and inside express.json. So that's it. Now Express is configured to receive request body as a JSON format. Let's test this again on Postman. So I'm just gonna click on send. We got okay as a response and back on VS Code, there it is. We got the JSON request body from the client and now we can manipulate this data inside the post route. Perfect, uh, let me just close the terminal here and inside the post route, we need to get the product array and insert the data sent it from the client. So below the console log, I'm gonna get the product array dot push to add a new object and inside, I'm gonna put the request dot body. That's it. Now we need to send a better response to the client. Uh, as you can see here on Postman, the status send on the response by default is 200, okay? But a better practice when the request creates a new resource is to send the 201 status code, which means created. So let's change this response here on the route. So to change the status code is dot status. And this time we're gonna send 201, perfect. And we also want to send a JSON response here with a message saying that the resource was created successfully. So inside the JSON method, I'll add an object with a message saying product created successfully. Okay. Great, uh, let's test all these changes on Postman to see if the product is being created. So I'm not gonna change anything here. Uh, I'm just gonna click directly on send. And that's it, we got the 201 created status code and the message saying product created successfully. And let's call the get products uh, endpoint now to see if the product was created. So we have two products, click on send, and there it is. We have the new product created inside the array with all the details that the client sent on the request. Perfect. Let's test this route again and we're gonna create a new product. So I'm gonna open the post request here and I'm just gonna change the details that we have here. So for the name, I'll add here a uh, computer, for example, and the price for this one, it's gonna be 700. The quantity we have just one, I'm gonna leave the active here as true, but I'm gonna insert a new field here. So let's say the branch field. 
okay and I'm just gonna put here uh, ABC for example and let's click on send to test this okay so we got a successful message the 201 and let's test the get products now I'm gonna spend this a little and let's click on send perfect so the new product was created but this new field here is created as well and the other products doesn't have this field so we might need to add some validation here to make sure to include only the fields that we need so let's do that back on VS code uh, inside the post route uh, I'm just gonna delete this console log here and I'm gonna create a new const here and this is gonna be an object that will have only the fields from the request dot body that we actually need okay so in this case uh, it's gonna be the name the price the quantity and the active okay so we're extracting these fields from the request dot body now here on the products.push instead of sending the request.body we need to send an object here with these fields separate so the name is going to be the name that we have on the top here and the next one is going to be the price equals the price and the third one is going to be the quantity equals to quantity and the last one it's the active which is going to be equals to active okay so we're building the object directly inside push method but as you can see the name of the fields is the same name as the values so we can just add it once like this okay perfect so it's a lot more cleaner like this let's test this again to make sure only these four fields will be included on the product details so on postman let me call again the get products endpoint and it's only going to return two products because every time nodemon restarts the server every data that we had in memory is going to be deleted so let's test the post endpoint again i'm just going to leave the same data here with the new field as well so let's click on send okay we got a success message 201 and let's test the get endpoint again so click on send and there it is the new product is here with only the four fields that we validate so the new field is not going to be there because we're actually handling this on the post route okay we're validating only these four fields perfect so everything is working let's do one more test here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the name field okay and the new field as well okay so if I click on send okay we got a success message but if we call the get endpoint again so let me open the tab and click on send the new product was created but without the name field and let's say that we need at least this field to be required so we need to add another validation inside our post route so let's do that back on vs code below the fields extraction here i'm gonna add an if statement checking if the name is not on the request body so if and i'm gonna put the exclamation sign here which means not so if name is not there we need to return a response for the client informing that the name is required so return and response dot status and the status code we're going to send is 422 which means unprocessable entity and indicates that the request contains invalid data so 422 and we're also going to send a json response with a message as well so inside the object here i'm going to put message and the message will be name is required perfect so we add the return method here before the response uh, that means that the rest of the code we have after this if statement won't be executed so let's test again on postman and i'm just gonna call the get product endpoint so we have the two products here and let's include this new product without the name field click on send and here's the response we got the 422 on processable entity and the message saying that the name is required perfect so our validation is working and we did a quite a few changes here on the post route so we're actually adding only the fields that we need uh, we're adding the validation to make sure the name is there and sending the correct response with the status code and the message perfect now we have the get products endpoint that we were testing here which returns all products 
But what if the client needs only one product? Let's say the client requests to read data only for the laptop, for example. So we need to create a new field in this product that's gonna be unique, like an ID. So let's do that every time we create a new product here on the post route. Uh, we're gonna create a new field which is going to be a unique ID for the new product. And to help us creating this ID, we're gonna require a new module on the top and this is a built-in module that already comes with Node, so we don't need to install this module. And it's called crypto, so const crypto equals to require crypto. So crypto performs data encryption and decryption, and it also has a function to generate a UUID. So that's the one that we're gonna use. So here before the products push, we're gonna create a new const here called ID. So const ID. And this is gonna be equals to crypto dot. And there's a function here called random UUID, which returns a unique string every time we call this function. Now we need to add this new ID const inside the product's uh, object. So here inside the push, the object, I'm just gonna put ID equals to ID. Since it's the same name, the key and the value, we just need one ID here, just like the other fields. And let's send this unique ID on the response as well. So inside the object here, uh, after the message, I'm gonna insert the ID. So comma, ID equals to ID. But since the key is the same as the value, so we just leave ID here. Perfect, so let's test all this to make sure the ID is being created. So on Postman, on the post endpoint, uh, I'm just gonna insert the name here. So name, and this is gonna be a computer. Okay, so we have all the details here. So I'm just gonna click on send. And there it is, we got the 201 with the message and the unique ID, as you can see this weird string here. So let's test this on the get product endpoint, so send and perfect. Here's the new product with the new unique ID field, okay? But as you can see, the other products doesn't have this ID. So we definitely need to add this new unique ID on this product as well. So I'm gonna copy this entire response here and I'll paste inside the products array inside our code, okay? And now I'm just gonna copy this ID field from the last product we inserted and I'm gonna paste inside both products here. Uh, I'll just change the last letter or both of them so we can have unique IDs here. Okay, perfect. Let's check on Postman. I'll call the get products endpoint and perfect. So all products now have this uh, unique ID field here. So this is the field that we're gonna use to get a specific product from the array and send it to the client. As a response, we just wanna send an object with the product details like this one, for example. Okay, so back on VS Code, we need to create a new get route. So right below the post route that we have, uh, I'm just gonna type here app.get. And the name of this route is also gonna be slash products, but this time the client will send us a parameter, which is gonna be the unique ID. So we need to name that parameter here. And to insert parameters, we have to insert a column and the name of the parameter. In this case, it's gonna be ID. So slash products slash ID parameter. And this is also gonna receive a request and a response. And inside the route, let's write the request parameter on the console. So console log, and to get the parameter from the request, let's get the request object. And we have a property here called param. Okay, perfect. Let's just send a response to the client. So response, dot send and I'm just gonna send okay. All right, so let's just test this new endpoint on Postman and send this parameter to the server. So I'm just gonna copy the URL here for the get products and I'm gonna create another request using get as well. And I'm just gonna add a parameter here, just a random number, click on send. Okay, we got the response. Now let's check on the terminal, what we have on the console. Perfect, so we have an object here with all the parameters that we send, but we just send one, which is the ID. Okay, so everything's working. Now we can use this parameter to grab a product from the product array and send back to the client. So inside the route, I'm just gonna delete this console log and I'm gonna create a new const called product. So const product is gonna be equals to the product array 
and to get a specific product here I'm gonna use the find method okay and inside this find method we have a callback which is gonna return a product for us so I'm just gonna put product here and inside the callback function we're gonna check for each product on the array if the ID is equal to the request dot params dot ID okay so if the ID sent it on the request parameter matches any of the IDs on the products array then the find method will return us the object related to that ID now for the response I'm just gonna copy the response that we have on the get products route so I'm just gonna copy this one and I'm gonna paste it on the new get route that we created now we need to send the const prod on the response okay just like this perfect now I'm gonna add the status code for all successful responses that doesn't have a status code uh, although the default is 200 but let's keep the code organized and implicit add the status code for all of them okay so I'm just gonna change in all the get uh, requests that we have okay so let's test the changes for the get specific product route so back on postman I'm gonna open the get products tab here and I'm gonna copy the ID of one of the products that we have so I'll copy the computer product ID here now I'll just paste the copied ID as a parameter on the get specific product endpoint okay just like this now let's click on send perfect here's the response 200 okay and here's the computer product object so everything's working now let's test with a different product so I'm just gonna get the laptop ID and I'm gonna paste here as a parameter okay click on send and here it is the laptop object now what if the client sent an ID that doesn't exist let me change the last letter here on the ID okay so this product doesn't exist this ID here so let's click on send okay we got a success response 200 okay but the response body is empty as expect of course because this product doesn't exist so we need to add a validation here on the route to check if the product is returned by the find method so I'm gonna add an if statement here before the response exclamation sign product so if the product is not there it doesn't exist so we're gonna return a response with the status code now we have a couple of options here so let's start with the 204 which means no content it is a success response but there is no product matching the parameter okay and dot send with nothing inside so let's test this on postman again to see what kind of response we get click on send and there it is 204 no content as the status code now if we still try to send something here as a response to the client so I'll just write a test here and if we click on send we're still not gonna get a response body because the 204 status code won't allow to send any response body since it means no content another response we can send to the client so let me just comment this one so return response status code uh, we can send the 404 as well which means not found okay and let's send a JSON uh, message here so inside the object message and I'm just gonna put uh, product not found okay so let's test this again uh, on postman I'm just gonna click on send and here it is 404 and the message okay so we can use the 404 as well no problem but usually 404 refers to our URL that doesn't exist okay an endpoint that wasn't found so for example let me copy the get product endpoint here okay and I'm gonna open another tab to make another request but instead of products I'm gonna put users okay this endpoint doesn't exist on our API so if we click on send uh, we got this status code as 404 as well no content so in this kind of situation uh, when a resource is not found we can use 204 or 404 it's really up to your API needs okay so let me close this new request that we just made here 
Okay, perfect. So here on our route, uh, I'll just leave the 404 as a default status code response in case if a resource was not found. Okay, perfect. So our get specific product route is working. And what if a client wants to update details from a specific resource or a specific product? Till now, we can only create or read products, but not update a specific product. So we need to create a new route to update a product. Okay, so below our last route we created, let's create a new one. So app dot and the method that we use to update a resource is the put method. And the name of this route is also going to be slash products. And just like the get specific route, we're going to update a specific product. So we're gonna pass the ID parameter here as well. Okay, so here in the end, I'm gonna put slash column ID parameter, okay? And just like the other routes, we're always gonna have a request and a response parameter here. Okay, so inside this route, we need to find the product that matches with the ID parameter, just like on the get specific product route. So I'll just copy the entire code of the get specific product route, not the response though, and add it here inside the put route. Okay. So let me delete this commented response here because the default is going to be 404 if a resource wasn't found. Okay. Next, the client will send a request body with the product details it would like to update. So just like on the post products route, the client send the same details. So I'll just copy this piece of code where we are extracting the valid fields from the request body. And I'll paste on the put route right after the product validation. Okay. So now we need to check for each of the values on the request if they are present on the body. If they are present, then we need to get the specific product and update that specific field. So let's start with the name. If name is defined, if it exists on the request body, and then we're gonna get the product dot name equals to the new name. Simple as that. So we need to do for the rest of the fields here. Let me copy this one, this if statement, and paste it here before the first if. So this one is gonna be the price. If it is there, we're gonna update the product price, okay? Now we're gonna do the same for the quantity. So I'm just gonna copy this one. And okay, so let me copy the quantity here, paste it over here, okay? And the same for the active. Okay, copy, copy the active field here. If it is there, we're gonna update the product active. Okay, perfect. So we're checking if the product exists based on the parameter. If not, we're sending a 404 code with a message. Uh, otherwise, we're getting the fields from the request body, checking and updating each one of them. Okay, perfect. Uh, all we need to do now is send a response back to the client. So response, dot status and this one is going to be 200 as well and we're going to send a json response with a message inside so object message and i'm just going to put product updated successfully okay great so let's test this new endpoint on postman and the first thing i'm going to do is open the get products tab right here and let's update one of these products here. So let's update the keyboard quantity. Right now it's 10. So I'm gonna copy the keyboard ID and I'm gonna open a new request tab here on the top so we can call the put endpoint. Okay, so this one is gonna be HTTP 3000 products and the parameter here is gonna be the keyboard ID. And we need to change the method here from get to put, okay. Now we need to send a body to the request. So I'll click on the raw option and select the JSON type. Now here on the body, uh, I'll create an object with the quantity field. So let's check again, the keyboard has 10 units. So let's update this to 20. Okay, let's click on send. 
and we got a status 200 ok with the success message now let's check on the get products endpoint so we had 10 keyboards uh, click on send and now we have 20 units great so the update products endpoint is working let's check on the get specific product endpoint so i'll just paste the keyboard id here as a parameter click on send and perfect we got the correct details that we just updated let's update a different product so i'll copy the computer id here and on the put endpoint tab uh, i'll paste the computer id here as a parameter and let's update a different field now the active field from true to false okay click on send and okay we got the success message now let's check this product here on the get specific product endpoint I'll paste the computer ID here, click on send, and okay, uh, we got the correct product, but the active field didn't update. It's still true here. So let's write on the console, uh, what are we receiving on the request body for the active field? So console.log active. Okay, so let's call the put endpoint again to check what are we receiving here. Back on Postman, on the put endpoint tab, I'll just click on send. Okay, so we send the active as false again. Now let's check on VS Code. I'll open the terminal here. Okay, so we got false on the console, which means that we are receiving the correct value on the request body. But the problem is actually on this if statement here. So the active field here is false. So JavaScript is reading this as if false because it's a Boolean field. So what's inside this if statement will never be executed. Only if active is true, then the if statement will be executed and the product will be updated. So instead of checking if the active field exists like this, uh, we're going to change this condition. So I'll add quotes on the active field to read the name of the field and not the value. And we're going to use an operator here called in. So if active in request dot body, and then the if is going to be executed and the product will be updated. Okay. So let's test this on Postman again. I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna click on send. Okay, we got a 200, okay. Now let's check here on the get specific product endpoint. Okay, now the active is false here and the validation is working, okay? So let's change this back to true just to make sure it's working. Click on send. Now back on the get specific product, I'm just gonna click on send and there we go, okay. So now the put endpoint is working perfectly. Great, so this condition is working and we can get rid of this console log here. Okay, so our API is getting some shape here. Uh, we have an endpoint to get all products, to create a new product, to get a specific product and to update a specific product as well. Great, so to complete a crude application, all we need now is an endpoint to delete a product. So let's create this new endpoint right below the put endpoint. So app.get and we're gonna use the delete method here to delete a specific resource. And the name of this route is going to be slash products and the client will send the ID parameter as well, just like the get specific product and update a product. So we are already familiar with this and we're gonna have the request and the response parameter here. Okay, so inside this route, uh, instead of finding a product like we were using before, we need to find the index of that product. So in the products array, each of these products here have an index that starts with zero. The laptop index is zero, the keyboard index is one, and the computer index is two. Okay, so back on the delete route, I'm gonna create a new const here called product index. So const product index. And this is gonna be equals to products array. And instead of using the find function, we're gonna use the find index function. And inside this function is gonna be the same as the find function. So we have a product and a callback here. So we're gonna search for the product ID and it should be equals to the request dot params dot id just like we were using before so let's write on the console log this product index here 
Okay, so on the next line, I'll just put console dot log and inside product index. Okay, now let's just send a response here to the client. So response dot send. Okay, so let's test this new endpoint here on Postman. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new tab here and the URL is gonna be the same, HTTP, localhost 3000, products, and the method here is gonna be delete. Okay, and on the get product endpoint, let me open the tab here and let me copy an ID here of one of these products. So let's get the laptop ID, okay, copy. And on the delete endpoint, I'll just put here as a parameter. We can click on send. Okay, we got 200, okay. Back on VS Code, let me open the terminal. And here it is, zero is the index of the laptop. Let's test with another ID here. Let's test with the computer, it should return to. So let me paste here as a parameter, click on send. All right, and there it is. The find index function is working perfectly. Now let's try with an ID that doesn't exist. So back on Postman, I'm just gonna change the last letter here. Okay, click on send, and we still got the okay, but we got minus one on the logs here. So whenever the find index function cannot find an index, it's going to return minus one. Okay, so let's add that validation on the delete route. Let me just get rid of this console log here. And we're gonna check if the product index equals to minus one, then we're gonna return the same response from the other routes that we were using. So I'm just gonna copy here from the put route the 404 response with the message, okay? And I'm gonna paste right inside this if statement here. Okay, so if the index is not found, we're gonna return 404 with the JSON message that we we're using before. Now, if the index is found, we need to delete that index related to the product from the array. So product, and we're gonna use a function here on JavaScript that is called splice to delete a specific index from the array. Splice receives two parameters. The first one is the index, in this case, the product index. And the second parameter is how many items we want to delete after the index that we've input. So the first parameter is gonna be the product index. And the second parameter is just one because we just wanna delete one product here. Okay, now let's send a better response to the client so instead of just a text, uh, I'm gonna put here the status code, so dot status. And we can send 204 no content here, which means that the request was successful, the resource was deleted successfully. But for the other endpoints, uh, we are returning 200 okay with a JSON message. So let me change this to 200 and let me put JSON here inside the object. I'll just put a message saying product deleted successfully. Okay, this way we send the responses in the same pattern, just like the put endpoint and the post endpoint. Okay, perfect. So everything here is done uh, and we're ready to test this new delete endpoint. So let's go back to Postman and I'm gonna open the get products tab here on the top. And let's select uh, a product here to delete. So let's get the, the keyboard, okay? I'm gonna copy the keyboard ID so we can delete this product. And on the delete endpoint, uh, I'm just gonna paste here the keyboard ID. Okay, click on send. Perfect, we got the 200 status okay, the message. And now if we check on the get all product endpoint, there it is, we don't have the keyboard product here anymore. So the delete endpoint is working perfectly, okay? Let's try with another one, let's try with the computer. Uh, actually, let's try with a product that doesn't exist, okay? So let me just change the last letter here, click on send, okay, and we got the 404, product not found. Okay, perfect, so the validation is working as well. And great, so our API is complete. We have a complete REST API here using a CRUD example. So we have endpoints to create, read, update, and delete a resource. In our case, is the products resource. 
So one last thing I would like to do before we wrap it up is to organize this code a little. So we add all the routes inside the index.js file. But imagine if we have other endpoints for other resources, this index.js file is gonna be huge and really hard to maintain. Uh, ideally, the index.js file is where we put our configurations like to start Express, to connect to a database, and to create our server. Uh, we should separate all these routes here into a different file. So let's do that now. Uh, I'll start by creating a folder here on the root of our project. And this folder is gonna be routes, okay? And inside this folder, I'm gonna create a new file call product route dot js okay and inside this file uh, we're gonna copy all the routes that we have from the index.js file so let me scroll all the way to the bottom the delete route to the array over here okay let's copy and let's paste inside the products route dot js okay so let's organize this a little bit here. Uh, above the array, I'm gonna add a express handler to manage the route, which is called router. And we can export this to use in different files. Okay, so const router equals to require express dot router function. Okay, so we're calling the function directly here on the express import. Okay, now we need to get this const router here and replace all this app here inside this file. So command F or control F to open the find dialog. So we're gonna find for app and we're gonna replace with router. Okay, click on replace all and that's it. So now we have the router.get.post.put and delete. All we need to do here on the bottom is export this router uh, function. So module.export equals to router. Now we can use all these routes here in another file. We just need to import the crypto that we're using on post endpoint. So I'm just gonna copy the import here from the index.js file. Okay, I'm gonna cut from here and I'll paste right after the router. Okay, perfect. Let me close this dialog and let's save the products route.js. And in the index.js file, let me copy again all these routes here from the delete to the first get, uh, actually to the products array. Okay, we can get rid of all this here. And now we need to tell Express that we have routes in a different file. In this case, the products route.js. So in the index.js file, after the express JSON configuration, we're gonna add app.use, and inside uh, we're gonna require the products route.js. Okay, so require, and the index.js file is on the root of the project, and we need to access the products route file from inside the routes folder. To do so, we're gonna add dot slash to access all files and folders from inside the same directory of the index.js file. We're gonna select the routes folder and products route file. Okay, let's save the index.js file and let's test this on Postman to see if the routes are still working. So let me open the get all products tab here. And on the response, we have two products, but on the array, we have three. So if I click on send, great. So all the changes we did, it's working perfectly. So we separate all routes from the index.js file and we can get rid of this home route because we're not using. Okay, so if you notice here, uh, all routes from this file starts with slash product, okay? And we can actually configure this uh, inside the index.js file, okay? So everything that contains product here, uh, we're gonna add inside this app.use, okay? So as a first parameter here, I'm gonna put slash product and comma, and then the required products route file. Perfect, so now we can get rid of all these slash products on the start of all these routes here. So let me select the slash products, which all routes starts with, and let's open the find dialog. Okay, the slash products is already here on the field, and we're gonna replace with just a slash. Okay, replace all. 
perfect. So we need to remove these extra slash here from the routes that has the ID parameter. Okay, so the get specific route, the put route, and the delete route as well. Okay, perfect. So let's test some of these endpoints here to make sure it's working with this extra configuration we made here on the app.use. On Postman, let's call the get all products route. Okay, perfect, it's working. Now let's add a new product here on the post route and the name of this one is gonna be, I'm just gonna put product test. Okay, and the price is gonna be 300 and the quantity would just leave as one and the active will be false for this one. Click on send. Okay, here's the message with the ID 201. Now let's test on the get all products and perfect. So here's the new product with all the details uh, we added on the request. Okay, the changes we made are working fine, but we can still improve this code. Uh, it's a good practice to separate the routes file from the logic inside this route. And we should create a file uh, with functions that their names already gives us a hint of what that function does. Like for example, get all products, get product by ID, create product, update product, and so on. And we're gonna call these functions from this separate file inside these routes, okay? Uh, we call these files controllers. So here on the root of the project, uh, I'll create another folder called controllers. And inside this folder, I'll create a new file called products controller .js. Okay. Perfect. So inside this file, we're gonna copy all the routes that we have here on the products route.js. Okay, so let me scroll here to the delete route to the array. Actually, I'm gonna copy the crypto as well. Okay, and we're gonna paste inside these products controller. Okay, great. So let's make a few changes here. Uh, we're not gonna have this router.get, router.post anymore. We're gonna replace this uh, with functions and we're just gonna leave the code from inside the routes. We need to export these functions so we can use on the routes file. To export the function, I'll put here export dot and the name of the function. So the first one here will be get all products. And this is gonna be equals to the same code that we have here on the get all products route. So inside this function, I'm gonna add the two parameters, the request and the response. And we're gonna put the function here, arrow function. And inside, I'm just gonna copy the response that we have from the route and place it over here inside the function. Perfect. So now we can get rid of this get uh, route here. Now we're gonna do the same process for all the other routes. So export dot, and the next one will be create product. Okay, and I'm just gonna copy here the whole thing that we have from this route, including the request and response, equals to, and I'll paste it right here. Okay, so we can get rid of this post route here. And now for the specific product route, so export, and this one will be dot get, product by ID. Okay, and it's gonna be equals to the same code that we have here. So I'm just gonna copy, paste it, and that's it. Now we can delete this route and the same for the update product. So export dot update product and it's gonna be equals to the same code from inside the put route. Okay, just copy and paste. Okay, delete the route, the put route, and now exports.delete product, and it's gonna be the same as the delete route. Okay, copy everything and paste it right here and delete the route. Okay, perfect. So we have all the logic from all the routes separating functions inside this controller. Now we just need to modify the product route file, deleting all the logic from inside the routes. So I'll start by removing the crypto library and the products array as well. Okay, so now we need to import the products controller.js file here on the top. So const product controller equals to require 
Now we need to go back one folder because we're inside the routes folder so we need to access the controller folder. Okay so for that I'm gonna put here dot dot slash and we are accessing the root here so controllers and the products controller. Okay perfect. Now we need to replace for each route the logic inside with the functions from the controller file. So here on the get all products route we're gonna add the products controller dot get all products. Now we're gonna do the same for the post route so I'm just gonna select all the code inside the route and replace with products controller dot create product. Okay, the same for the get specific product. So products controller dot get product by ID. Okay, the same for the put route. So select the code and products controller dot update product. And the last one for the delete route, just gonna select here and products controller delete product. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let me organize this routes file here. So I'll just remove these blank lines between the routes and let me group all the routes by method here. So I'll get the get product by ID route and I'll just cut and paste below the all products route. Great. So we complete all changes for our REST API and the code looks a lot more organized and cleaner than before. Uh, we separate the route file from the logic and we add it on the controller file. Now let's test each of these routes to make sure they're working after all the changes we did. Back on Postman, let's check the get all products route. Okay, here are the three products we had in the array. Let's add a new one. Okay, we have all the details here. I'm just gonna click on send. Perfect, product create. Let's test again the get all products. Okay, here's the new product. Uh, let me copy the new product ID and let's test the put route. So I'm just gonna paste here as a parameter and I'm gonna update the name field and inside here I'm gonna put adapter. Okay, click on send and we got a success response. Now I'm just gonna copy the ID here on the parameter and let's test the get specific product. So I'm gonna paste the ID here, click on send and here's the new product update with the name adapter. Okay, perfect. Now let's delete this product here to make sure it's working. So I'll just paste the ID here and click on send. Okay, product delete successfully. Let's test the get all products and the product's not here anymore. So all routes are working after the changes we made. Awesome, so let's say we need to create new routes for other resources. Uh, we just need to create a new route file here inside the routes folder. So for example, users route.js. We probably need to create a users controller as well. And here on the index.js, we need to add another app.use. So let me copy the products route and change these products here to users and require the users uh, route file. Okay, so in this video, we learned the basics of a REST API, how to manipulate requests, validate a request body and parameters. Uh, send responses to the client with a status code and a JSON response as well. We learn how to configure express and organize routes and controller files. Uh, I'll leave the git repo link for this project on the description below. I uh, hope this video was helpful and thank you so much for watching. So I'll see you in the next video.